Hi, I'm Tammy Brady, um, and today I'm going to show you how to take a uh, manual blood pressure measurement. I have Chelsea here to help me demonstrate this for you. Uh, the first thing you're going to want to do is you want to measure the mid-arm circumference because that's the essential step in choosing the right blood pressure cuff. The way in which you do this is you want to place your participant's arm uh, in a 90 degree angle, and you want to make sure that you're able to palpate the bony prominences. Uh, what you need here is the acromion, which is the bony prominence um, of the shoulder, and you're going to want to measure it from there to the tip of the elbow. So you'll need a tape measure to do this. And so you measure between, again, the acromion or the bony prominence of the shoulder to the tip of the elbow on the dorsal aspect of the arm. And for Chelsea, we have 32 centimeters. So half of that would be 16. And so you'll take your pen and you're want to, going to want to mark where that is. So that you can remember where you need to place the cuff or the, um, the tape measure. So then you'll have her place her arms straight. And now you'll measure the mid-arm circumference. And you want to make sure that this is uh, snug but with no indentation. Okay, and so for Chelsea, that's 23 centimeters. Okay, so then you use that information to determine which cuff you're going to use. And so for Chelsea, you'll see here, we're going to use a child-sized cuff uh, with her mid-arm circumference being 23 centimeters. Um, then what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to palpate the brachial artery so that you know where you're going to uh, center your bladder. Again, you're going to want to mark that. Uh, so then, when you take your cuff, you're going to want to feel inside for the bladder because the bladder, as you'll see, is much smaller than the packaging. And I've demonstrated that here with the adult cuff. This is the bladder, and you'll see that it is, in fact, much smaller than the packaging. Uh, and what you're going to want to do is you're, you're going to want to identify where the midpoint of this bladder is. So you're going to find the ends, the two tips, and approximate them to determine where the midpoint is. And it's an important step to do this because this midpoint, again, you want to have centered above the brachial artery so that the brachial artery gets really more um, symmetric compression. And you'll note that on the cuff, there's um, a marking where the artery should be, but you should disregard that and really focus on where the actual middle part of that bladder is. Okay? So then you'll have your participant raise their arm up, and then you're going to, again, um, center that bladder. And you want to make sure that the cuff fits snugly, not too tight, but snugly. You don't really want to have any more than two centimeters being able to fit underneath. And you're also going to want to make sure um, that the bottom of the cuff um, is not directly above the, uh, the cubital fossa because you want to have enough room to put your stethoscope there without it touching the blood pressure cuff. Okay. So at this point, you're going to want to make sure that the participant has uh, is seated properly and you want to make sure that they're at rest for at least five minutes, okay? And so essential parts of this, so you want to make sure the back is supported and that their feet are supported. Uh, if you happen to have somebody who's short um, and their feet are sort of dangling, you're going to want to make sure you put something underneath their feet so that they are in fact supported. You want to make sure their legs are not crossed. Um, you want to make sure, again, that they've come in um, with an empty bladder. Um, and, um, and again, you want to make sure that the arm is situated so that, uh, that their cubital fossa is at heart level. Okay, so what I would do at this point is I would set your timer for five minutes and leave the room. Uh, and since you'll be, uh, particularly if you're dealing with a teenager, you want to make sure that there's no cell phones in the room um, and that they really are at rest for those five minutes. So then after the five minutes, um, you'll come on in uh, and you'll attach uh, the dial. <coughs> And so now what you're going to do is you're going to determine what the pulse obliteration pressure is. And that is an important uh, number to know because that's going to help you determine how far out to inflate the sphygmomanometer. So determine the pulse obliteration point. You want to palpate the radial artery. And you're basically going to inflate the sphygmomanometer to the point where you no longer feel the radial artery. And the best way in which to do this is to basically pump and feel, pump and feel, pump and feel, pump and feel. Okay, and so for Chelsea, that is uh, 90, okay? So the pulse obliteration level for Chelsea is 90. So when you add 
30 to that, that is 120, and that's going to be your peak inflation level. Okay, so we're going to let our arm rest, um, and we are going to uh, get ready to take the measurement. Okay, so with blood pressure measurement, you really want to focus on using the bell of the stethoscope, not the diaphragm, because this point, the bell uh, allows you to best hear the cough cough sounds. And you really want to make sure that you apply very light pressure because that allows you to best hear, again, the cough cough sounds. We're going to be measuring K1, K4, and K5. So K1 uh, is your systolic blood pressure, and that's the point at which you hear uh, several rhythmic uh, uh, beats. So not just one beat, but you want to have at least two rhythmic beats. Uh, and that first one of those rhythmic beats is you're going to be K1. And then at the point at which the cough cough sounds become muffled is K4. Uh, and the point at which the cough cough sounds disappear is K5. So those are the three measurements that you're going to be recording. So, <clears throat> so we're going to get ready. So we're going to measure her blood pressure. We're going to put the bell um, right over the brachial artery. We're going to inflate uh, the sphygmomanometer to 60 quickly, and then to the peak inflation level. And then we're going to deflate by 2 millimeters of mercury a second until we hear the sounds. So you're going to want to make sure that you record that number and that you make sure that this cuff is completely deflated. And then you'll set your timer uh, and make sure that her, you raise her arm uh, passively for 15 seconds. And then um, after those 15 seconds are over, you'll allow her to rest her arm for another 15 seconds like this. And then you'll take two more blood pressure measurements in exactly the same way um, and making sure to record them uh, after each measurement. And that's it.